Hey everybody, this is Gregory from Dapp University. So in this video, I'm gonna talk about four mistakes that new blockchain developers make and how you can avoid them. So before we get into that, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And also if you're interested in learning how to build blockchain technology, you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. And I've got the link to that down in the description below. So let's talk about four mistakes that new blockchain developers make and how you can avoid them. So the first mistake that I see a lot of new blockchain developers make is basically trying to copy and paste other applications onto the blockchain. And let me explain you know, why this is bad and what you should do differently. And let me give an example. Sometimes you might see someone trying to you know, build a product in the blockchain, so they'll just build a blockchain version of an existing application like a blog. And they'll just do it to say that it's running on a blockchain. They're not necessarily taking advantage of the features of blockchain technology, like you know, trustlessness and censorship resistance and you know, decentralization, which we'll talk more about later in this video. So that's a mistake I see a lot of new blockchain developers make. They'll just take existing products and build blockchain versions of them without using you know, the advantages of the blockchain. And that's okay for learning purposes. Like you might see some of my other tutorials where I talk about, you know, building like a to-do list on Ethereum or something like that, just so that you can learn, that's fine. But as far as building production applications go, you definitely want to leverage the power of the blockchain and use it for what it's good at. So let's look at some other examples. There's people that are doing stuff like social networks on the blockchain, right? So if your blog was a part of a social network like Medium, for example, right, where there's, you know, you can discover new articles and like posts and things like that, you could use blockchain technology to, you know, make this to where you don't have to trust a central entity with your data, for example, right? That's something a lot of people don't like about traditional web applications is that whenever they, you know, create a user account, they have to submit all this data to a central entity that they're going to sell to somebody else, right? And that's a way that you could potentially build a blogging engine or a social network with the blockchain is to actually use what it's good at and let users retain more of their own information and not necessarily give it to your application. So mistake number two that I see a lot of new blockchain developers make is putting too much data on the blockchain. So let's give an example. Let's talk about the blogging engine that I mentioned in the last example and say, if you're gonna build this, you might see someone try to put all the data about a blog post inside of a smart contract on the blockchain. They might try to put you know, the title, the post body, the tags, the author, all kinds of stuff inside a smart contract with Solidity. You know, they might use a struct or something like that to model this and treat it like just a database that they store all their information in. And usually this is the wrong approach, right? Let me explain why. So it's true, the blockchain basically is a large distributed database, but you don't necessarily want to treat it like you would a traditional, like relational database, like, you know, Postgres or, you know, some other type of database like MongoDB or something like that, right? You want to actually use the blockchain for what I said, like I said in the last example, use it for what it's good at, right? And it's not necessarily made for just dumping all the information about your blog post inside of it. If you're gonna you know, model a blog post on the blockchain, you might wanna actually store some of the data about your blog post off of the blockchain somewhere else and then store a reference to that data on the blockchain inside of a smart contract or something like that. So for example, you could use something like IPFS, which is decentralized file storage, which I've got other videos that talk about that if you're interested. Um, or you could just use you know, a regular web server to store some information about a blog post if your users were okay with that. And then you could store a reference to that inside the smart contract. Or you might have seen some of my other videos where I show you how to build dApps with IPFS. And you know, I think we, I have a tutorial where you, know, you upload an image and you get a reference to the IPFS hash where the image is stored and you can store that inside of a smart contract. So that's a way to limit the amount of data that you're storing on the blockchain is to store references to off-chain data in the blockchain database itself. And I don't think I mentioned this yet, but one of the big reasons this is important with Ethereum is for performance and cost. So whenever you're using you know, Ethereum, you have to pay gas fees anytime you store data on the blockchain. And the more data you store and the more complex it is, uh, you know, the bigger it is, the more gas that's going to cost and it's gonna get expensive. So you wanna reduce that cost by you know, putting some of your storage somewhere else. 
So mistake number three that I see a lot of new blockchain developers make is focusing too much on decentralization. So what do I mean by that? Well, first, what is decentralization, right? Decentralization is, you know, philosophy or a theme that you see you know, kind of running through a lot of uh, the blockchain space, right? And it's really opposed to centralization. So what do these two things mean? You know, centralization is a concentration of control and ownership. Um, you know, I talked about in the previous examples, you know, like a social network owning a lot of your data, right? You know, you sign up the application and they control all the code, they control all of the data in the application. That's centralization. And the alternative is decentralization where, you know, if it was fully decentralized, they wouldn't own anything. They wouldn't even own the code to the uh, application and it wouldn't be able to be changed. And they wouldn't own any of the data that's used in the project. Where do new blockchain developers run into an issue with decentralization? Well, sometimes it's really hard to achieve 100% decentralization inside of a dApp. You know, some dApps can, right? But oftentimes it's, it comes at a cost, right? With user experience or you find yourself being limited uh, just for, for the tools are right now and the technology and you just can't quite achieve it in a way that's really viable for end users, right? So what I recommend is trying to find ways where you can make incremental trade-offs. Where can you make compromises that give your users most of what they want out of decentralization, but you know, don't, uh, isn't fully decentralized? So I'll give you an example. Um, let's just say you had a dApp that was powered by a smart contract on Ethereum, but you know, the assets to the client-side application weren't necessarily stored on a blockchain or they weren't stored on IPFS. You know, most people are just used to visiting a website and if it was powered by a smart contract and that would give your users the experience they expect out of traditional applications like fast loading times and things like that and you wouldn't have to, you know, worry about them bouncing from your site and not using it because it's, it's too slow. So they would be able to get most of what they want by having some amount of decentralization, actually a lot of decentralization, but centralizing the things that they're okay with you controlling. So mistake number four that I see a lot of new blockchain developers make is not having their code audited. So before you, know, you deploy a smart contract to the blockchain, it's really important to at least have someone look at it to see if you made any mistakes or if there's any security vulnerabilities or something like that. Remember, all the code that goes on the blockchain is immutable. It cannot change. So whenever you put a production smart contract out there, you know, it's out there for good. There's, you can't take it back. And if it's connected to your application and it's accepting user funds and things like that, that a lot of things could possibly go wrong. So whenever you're storing user funds in the blockchain, you know, like cryptocurrency funds, you want to be very careful because the cost of a security vulnerability could be very high. Either your funds could be compromised, you know, the ones that you raised for your project, or one of your users' funds could also be compromised. And you don't want that. You know, you don't want your funds to be taken. You don't want their funds to be taken. You don't want any kind of security vulnerability to be exposed that could jeopardize any part of your project. It's not good for anybody. So what I always caution blockchain developers to do is to slow down and do things right. You know, a lot of them are in such a rush to get their project out there, uh, or they just don't want to pay the money to have a code audit done. But I assure you, the cost of not having it done can be so high that you want to make sure you don't skip that step before you launch a real project. You know, the blockchain development life cycle is a lot slower than other projects because you can't always just, you know, push bug fixes and do stuff like that. You have to really be careful um, when you're doing this that you don't, you know, be careless. So those are the four mistakes I see a lot of new blockchain developers make. So I hope you all like this video. I hope you all can use those tips to guide you in the right direction when you're learning to build blockchain technology. And also, like I said, be sure to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already and click the like button down below. And also you can download my courses for free on my website over at dappuniversity.com forward slash free download. So again, I hope you all like this video. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.